Hello and good morning and welcome to this part 3 of the Tiger Tank tutorial. In this, in this part I'm working the, uh, the base coat of the green which is German Camo Dark Green. And I'm just making sure that I'm getting a decent coverage of the model doing several thin passes. In this next step, I'm uh, working with the highlight color, which is reflective green. Also from Vallejo, by the way. And as you can see, I'm working the same angles on the model that I did when I did the brown colors. Basically to make sure that once I peel off the liquid, the, uh, the highlights will match on the model. At least, at least that's the plan. And I'm using the business card to, to mask off certain sections. It's a cool little trick. Also to use some Tamiya masking tape for certain sections like uh, the side skirts and also the turret that I'm working right now. And the reason why I'm doing this, this modulation as it's called is basically because I think the, uh, uh, it makes the model look more exciting. And uh, also you have to remember that when you're playing with these models on a, on a tabletop, um, usually you are viewing them from a quite higher distance. So any details, etc., are gonna get lost basically on the model unless you exaggerate them. But it's really a, a stylistic choice. Um, the way I paint is... <laughs> I'm not a lighting scientist, to quote the great Kenny Boucher. So, um, so basically I just paint what I think looks fun. But I am very much inspired by uh, those painters who do exciting airbrush work and make use of the tool to and, and try to push it to the extreme, basically. Because, honestly, you, you want to be able to see that the model has been highlighted. Or else, well, why are you putting so much work into it if you're not going to see it when you are playing with the models? So, as you can see, the small business card trick here is to mask off certain sections of the, of the side skirts. Again, just to make them look more exciting. Now comes the uh, the fun bit, where uh, I'm actually gonna peel off the um, the masking liquid from Green Stuff World, and uh, as you can see, this has been sped up quite a bit, and I'm using a very essential tool that I just wanna give a shout out. By the way, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies at all. Um, I'm a hobbyist, so this is not a professional gig for me. Uh, the brush is basically a it's, it's a tool with a rubber tip that, as you can see, that I put in the left corner. Uh, Green Stuff World makes a bunch of these, and I remember just buying a packet of them to uh, to check it out at the local store. And um, and here we are. I'm using them, and as you can see, I'm using it quite a lot. And uh, if it's not clear on the video, I, I'm actually really really working on the um, uh, on, on, on the liquid and pressing pressing quite hard on it and which is a testament also to the quality of the paint uh, and also the liquid because um, there are basically no scratches in the paint despite me <laughs> giving it so much abuse uh, 
And also, I have to add that I didn't varnish the model prior to peeling off this paint, and that was basically as an experiment. I was mentally prepared to to uh, to to rip the paint uh, or part of the paint, uh, but as you can see, um, the result is that the the brown layer stays on, and the masking liquid doesn't shred it or or rip it apart, which is kind neat, kind of neat, right? It's a uh, and there you have it. That's the end result of the model, and um, that will be the end of this part three. In the next part, I'll take it to um, a further a further level with some more details on the camo and some edge highlighting and some contrast. So, with that said, thank you so much. Take care.